Hello and welcome back to Homeschool Together. Thank you for joining us. We are at the end of our journey. We made it. Through time. We have fine. Through time and toil. A working through, title. A working title. Uh, There's always a joke between us that if we ever wrote a historical fiction, yes. we would name it Through, through time, time and Toil. toil. <laughs> uh, we have, through time and toil, have reached the end of this wonderful curriculum. And yeah. we have finished in Arabia and kind of at that burgeoning point of the Middle Ages at, at the very end. So it's, I think it seems a natural ending point as... I think level yeah. two is um, Middle Ages, yeah. and, and you go right on. So here we are. Um, but before we do that, let's go back to China. <laughs> and we talk about finishing uh, Mulan. Right. So this last few weeks of the curriculum, you're going to be reading Mulan kind of all the way until the end. Um, so this is Mulan before the sword. It was funny because when we started this, you were like, well, but like... Where does this sit in the in the canon of Mulan? Right. And we're like... like before the sword. Before the okay. So anyway, this is a younger I, I, Mulan. I don't think I've watched Mulan end to end before. So. Really? No. Oh, silly. Sorry. Okay. There's just so many good, so much good music. How could you not? I know the music. Okay. Of course you do. Our daughters certainly do. Our daughters do. Um, so this was really good. Um, this is kind of a little bit more of a folk tale, right? Because Mulan pairs up with Jade Rabbit and she's on a quest to try to save yeah. her sister. And that's kind of a cool, cool idea. It's a longer book. It's about 360 pages. So that's why it's taken us so long. Um, and, and, and a little more densely written for that 360. It, it is. And so as you're going through the journey of them trying to solve this issue, and I don't want to spoil too much, but um, they're, they're like at a campfire or they're talking about the problem that they're going through. And, um, they tell these old folk tales, and there's these really cool italicized pages um, right here, as you see, where they're actually telling this folk tale. So one of the characters is, you know, articulating whatever the story is, mm -hmm. and, and multiple characters tell these stories throughout the book. And I thought it was a really cool way to kind of, you know, inject the culture and some of the um, kind of the ancient stories and mm -hmm. folk tales uh, along the way without it feeling very heavy-handed, like some of the complaints I had, like with Aru Shah when we were in India, um, it just felt very heavy because it was just like, oh, yeah, by the way, here's this, here's this. There's a lot of exposition. This felt more, um, you know, I think it was, uh, yeah, Grace Lynn did, had a real deft touch in introducing that. It felt very natural mm -hmm. and it was enjoyable. And it was, it a, was nice a more book. kinetic book it than It was. It, and 100%, the chapters, most of the chapters are three pages long, maybe three and a half pages long. And then you'll get these long folktale stories that might be 10 or 12 pages long. And they're nice. It's like run, 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 run. And it was very much a, uh, an adventure story. I mean, a lot of action, um, a lot of cliffhangers. Almost every chapter is a cliffhanger. So it really feels like you're being propelled through the story. Very At the very end, we were because we were traveling so much and we were missing chapters and, and some readings here and there, all of a sudden the library book came in for the audio book and we let my daughter finish the very end of it. Because yeah. she, um, she was really like, she's like, come on, guys. When can we get back to this? And it's like, Sorry. I don't know, you know, we... I'm trying to get back on this time zone game. <laughs> 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 but so we let her finish it and that's okay. You know, if you're at home and you're you're just not able to finish it, but your your reader is clamoring for mm -hmm. that or your, your learner is clamoring for it, it's okay to take those short shortcuts. Um Every book is not for you. I like this one. I actually liked it. The the section. Oh, we would have read it. We just yeah. didn't quite have quite enough time. I think I made it like two thirds through it, and then we had to go ahead and use the audio book to kind of finish it up. Yeah. Um, but it was a good read. It was it was, it was enjoyable. It was long. Yeah. I um, wish I could have read it. I just yeah. Didn't have this time. was you know I really do. I really felt like this is more your style book. Mm -hmm. um, reading the girls. I've done a lot more reading. Ariel's been fairly busy with school and, and whatnot, and I've been doing a lot more of the chapter book reading. That's not really something that I have. Uh, leveraged been leveraged towards mm -hmm. you always tend to do that in the evenings with the girls um, but this whole ancient civilizations I've been doing a lot of the, of the chapter book reading mm -hmm. and I really felt like out of all the books that we read I really felt like this was the one that you you would have enjoyed reading with the girls yeah um, it was, it's it was, more it was, your it was like lots of voices and things 100% and so, yeah. yeah I think definitely the next time around I definitely want to want to read that because yep. it, I, it, it it looks like a fabulous book and so it's very well written it's very clean very easy to read yeah our daughter yep. really loved it she was all into it and and we read you read like 80% of it or something. You were, it was right at the very read, end. I read most of it, yeah. So so we, we totally recommend it, even though uh, we like... Okay. Life life gets in the way. But if you finish Mulan early, because your young learner loves it, it's a very good book, um, you can get the Usborne Illustrated Arabian Nights, a little bit of folk tales if you want. Yeah, you know, we're not big folk tale people. If you followed us, we just don't... Usually they're weird. Honestly, they, they suffer from some strange storytelling, and our daughter's always like... 
huh? Why, yeah. why would he do that? Right? Like, <laughs> yeah. never makes sense to her. So it's just not our jam. Sure. Um, we know people that love sort fairy tales uh, and, and folk tales. But this one's really nice because it's pretty illustrated. Mm -hmm. And the um, movements of the characters are not so... Um, Strange. Yeah. All. And you can pick and choose the stories you want in here. Um, there's, I think, about a dozen of them in this book. Yeah, this is a really great addition. I just, I love the, the big color um, pictures. They're not long stories. Yeah. And I, I, I tend to think that they've smoothed the stories a little bit so that the characters don't just make such illogical you know, because yep. that's what happens in some folk tales, right? So the characters make these like nonsensical choices and our daughter, who's really logical and so are we, she's just like, I don't get it. Like, what? Yeah. what? It doesn't make sense. Yeah. Um, this is done really well. These are really fun yep. and they work great. Uh, we use them as bedtime stories. So uh, if you want to lean into this, you know, Rise of Arabia, um, this is a this is a good one, a good fun one to add. Absolutely. Now, uh, you spend a vast majority of the reading uh, in the history quest. I always get the I'm always like I want to say quest of history. <laughs> anyway, history quest. You spend a lot of time in kind of the rise of Islam, um, mm -hmm. especially through the story of Muhammad as he um, has his revelations and then he has his battles and solidifies his power and then when he when he dies how the power is, is transferred and everything. And so you spend a lot of time talking about that. So we wanted to bring back our Sea Inside World Religions, which is our Usborn, a flat book. And there are yep. a ton of references to lots and lots of religions. And they, you just got to go ahead and flip through the pages. Right. Um, so this find, is one. Find the one. That, that there's not your, a there's not a specific page just no. on each religion. They talk about different things like worship and prayer and, and so the you, gods and goddesses. You yeah. find the pieces on each page that correspond to the religion that you want to learn about. Yep. Um, there are there are more advanced um, Usborne books on world religions if you have a, a little bit older learner. This one works really great for these young learners. You know, if yeah. you're doing this with your first grader. Uh, this works awesome. Even our about to be kindergartner really loves this book. So this is the one we always turn to whenever when we we talked to, when we were in India. We talked about Hinduism. It's a it's a light book. It's very talked light. About Judaism. We, it's like this is the book. This is the one we, we kind of go back to it and go, oh hey. And it's funny because our daughter will run for us. She's like, oh, we're learning a new religion. Let me go get the book <laughs> yeah. because she's excited to lift the flaps. It's kind of like a. You know how they do like um, the, the the calendars where you get to yeah. when you get the chocolates or whatever. I feel like it's kind of like that for her. Like you know, we don't let her lift all the flaps. We only let her lift the ones about the religion we're learning about. So, so we can come back to it. So we can come back to it. And she's kind of excited to see what's under there. So yeah. this has been a really fun one for us, and and this is. I think it's great because it's taken us all the way to the very last week. So. Absolutely, absolutely. If you um, have the eyewitness book from Mesopotamia, so or get it from the library. We talked about this before. This is a decent book to pick up if you can, because you're going to be spending a lot of time in Mesopotamia mm -hmm. with the Assyrians, the Babylonians, the Sumerians. There's just a lot of time in Mesopotamia, and this book covers pretty much all of them. So you'll be able to pull it back, and I think it's well worth like a, you know get it used for like five bucks or something. I'm like so that. glad you say that because I bought this. I have a collection of the eyewitness books, but I actually bought Mesopotamia just for ancient Sib because mm -hmm. I knew like there's so many civilizations that are in that cradle that was like we're gonna be going back and, and back and back. If you have a chance, there is the rise of the Islamic age, and so they have a nice little mm -hmm. spread on that, and I believe they have. Uh, another page as well, uncovering the past. No, so basically, just a nice little spread on that, so you can use some of the you know, the artwork, um, some of the the motifs and everything that you will see common throughout the books. Um, was a nice uh, addition there, so to add a little bit more. Because again, like last week with the Byzantine Empire, this week we just have the history quest and we have the encyclopedia. So if you want to add a little bit more, right. make sure you have this book in your in your queue. I think uh, of all the books, I think this one you'll. I think get the most value out of so it's very, it's well worth dropping the money on, on Mesopotamia because you'll just keep coming back to this book. Right, and if not, they have it at your local library. Most libraries have the check eyewitness books. This is a great one to check out. Absolutely, and then one I don't know if we've talked about this one. This is Children Just Like Me celebrations. We had this for um, our around the world journey. Right. Uh, so as we went to various countries, we knew they had religions and celebrations mm -hmm. and festivals and and whatnot. 
And so we went ahead and did this. I don't right. know if we've talked about this one yet. I don't think we do. We do reference it every time, again, when we talk about uh, another religion in mm -hmm. the ancient Civ study, then we go and try to find a corresponding celebration. This is organized by um, months of the year so that you would actually start, you could start the book at the beginning of the year and kind of see what people around the world are all celebrating at different times of the year, which is a very cool thing to do if you wanted to do it this way. So they um, talk about Eid, which is the ninth lunar month of the calendar, which is mm -hmm. supposedly when Muhammad uh, got his revelations for the Quran yeah. um, as listed in, in our book. So a uh, cool little thing to talk a little bit more about mm -hmm. that celebration and the importance of that to them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it was really cool. It was, it was, it was yeah, interesting. It was so a good opportunity. Another, another opportunity to bring in a little bit more uh, depth to uh, the main theme. It was really just the origin of the religion. I mean, that's where they spent a lot of time and then a little bit on the caliphate that followed. Um, but that was really cool. And then we went ahead and, and jumped into a bunch of media. Um, there's a bunch of great videos. We'll put them down in the show notes below. The one that I really liked the most was talking about the geometry of Muslim or uh, Islamic art, um, especially in the region, and how they took very simply a protractor and a, and a ruler and used basically those two tools to create these extremely complex art um, motifs and, and these patternings, um, mm -hmm. all from basically drawing triangles and then connecting those lines and, and to the circle and then continuing that on and then stamping that like a pattern. And the, the, the creativity that comes from just the very simple two tools, how that drove a lot of the artwork that we saw in the books, a lot of the artwork we saw in the, in the videos. And we'll make sure to put that down below. I really love that book because you can really ha um, take that as an opportunity to pull out a protractor, a ruler, and, some, and, and actually create your own patternings in the same way that they use to create uh, the artwork. They don't do any um, uh, imagery of obviously Muhammad or any, so it's all very um, beautiful mosaic patternings is mm -hmm. what you end up seeing. And then obviously um, the, the, the writing is written down. So it's really just the word and these patterned um, art pieces that are, have kind of this geometric origin. Yeah, it's um, beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. And so I'll make sure to put that in, in the show notes below. Yeah. And then we had covered a bunch of um, videos on basically Muhammad's life and, and kind of his arc and, and giving a little bit more of the geography between Mecca and Medina. Uh, and that was really cool. Um, my daughters hadn't really covered much of that. And it was interesting too, to see like, okay, it was like the 60, you know, 600 AD time period. And really nobody, you could they showed the map where all these various empires had just never went there <laughs> in, into the Arabian Peninsula because it's you know, very harsh to live there. It's right. very, and then all of a sudden there was this massive explosion as they moved across Africa up into Spain, um, east into Asia. And it was just this kind of like, whoa, this big, big supernova event happened. Um, and so it was really cool to kind of learn about, about that and how that, uh, the history is still with us today. So it was kind of cool. It was a, it was a good week and yeah. it was a good ending um, yeah, to our, nice. to our entire journey. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this. We've enjoyed doing these videos as always. Yeah. Um, when we normally wrap these up, we always say we're going to come back and do a few wrap up videos and we're definitely going to do that. Find our best spines, find the best books that yeah, we enjoyed. We'll, we'll give some our final thoughts. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you some alternate spine ideas if you can't find the ones that the curriculum recommends. So yeah, we'll, we'll get together and do those and, and just give you our final thoughts. If you want to know like, well, in the end, which books were really <laughs> the ones you should buy? Because, you know, we've talked about a lot of books and some of them are just because we happen to have them and they were great and others As you can see behind. yeah others are like wow that book was you know yeah. i mean books like you know for instance the the child in time or mm -hmm. where on earth is like yeah those are like must do's for me whereas other ones like yeah i could take it or leave it so um yeah, so we'll do those. We'll wrap it up. This has been great, though. Mm -hmm. You know, our family is going to be uh, not moving on to the Middle Ages, which is, you know, at we're least, kind of like... At least now. We're going to, we'll do it in about we, a year or so. We are going to do it. But um, our youngest is entering kindergarten uh, this next fall. And so, you know, that's kind of the age she's at. So this summer, we're going to start and do a country study again. So if you followed us, you know that we did this full around the world journey. And we combined to build your library and torchlight and we'll go watch those videos. I'll link the playlist. But um, this time we're going to be doing something a little bit different, um, a little bit more yeah. focused, a little bit more based in experiential learning. Yeah. And I'm actually really excited about it. So, so if you've done, if you watched all our around the world journey videos and you go, oh no, they're just going to do the same thing over again. No. That's not what we're, we're going to do. We're going to twist it. We're going to change it. And we're going to keep walking our way through it. And so hopefully you guys will 
enjoy it. And especially with you families out there who have larger families that maybe you want to try and bundle a couple children together, or maybe you have two kids like Mm -hmm. we do that are about three, three and a half years apart, or maybe less. And you're wondering, God, can I do this with two kids? You absolutely can. And we're going to show you how to do it. Right. Yeah. We're going to show you how we're going to adapt it with our older, our older daughter and and make a kindergarten curriculum appropriate for a third grader. So yeah, stay tuned for that. We will, after we do our wrap up videos of this, we will have a video where we'll do kind of an overview of that and what we're thinking. I'm, I'm all in the planning stages, which you guys know I love. So, uh, we have a few months we're going to take, we're about to take about a month off here. Yeah. Cause I need some time to prep. I really want this to be um, exciting and I want our younger daughter to get kind of the best of the the uh, global journey and um, once, yeah until we start that we'll be putting out the videos to yeah. do the wrap-ups so you guys can enjoy the wrap-up videos and then all of a sudden we'll we'll go back around the world yeah and we're going to continue with our curriculum review videos if you haven't been watching those definitely check those out Matt's doing a fabulous job I'm trying yep um, so we're just getting so, so many takes we're getting through our huge curriculum library and we're seeking new curriculums and things yep. so keep in touch with us there as well uh, because we're going to be we're doing quite a few things and and you can check out our secular resource guide as well on our website that has all the secular resources you could want so you can search by age and um, by subject and some other things and find some really great secular curriculum and if you're here at the end of the arabia video still watching after all these videos you're the real hero <laughs> we'll see you guys next week